And of course, we're going to be talking about Texas. Uh, Texas, if if you're unaware, I don't know how you could be unaware at this point. Um, is is un- is an unfortunate disaster zone. Uh, and we're going to talk about why it's an unfortunate disaster zone. And as you can see from the title of the segment, uh, it's because of privatization. And part of the th- big question that I think people are asking um, or should be asking uh, is, um, should we be privatizing public utilities? That's the number one question we should be asking, you know, in regards to what happened with Texas. If there's a lesson that we can learn from from what happened, what's going on in Texas, what happened with Flint, Michigan, uh, you, you know, what's going on with with even even the state of Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh has has terrible water. Uh, you know, when we look at these public utilities, should they be privatized? Should they be run by private industries, by corporations? Uh, and the answer to that is no. And look, here, here's what's going on in Texas, right? There's there's hundreds of thousands of people without electricity, without power, without propane, without heat, and you know they're they're all bundled up and they're they're asking for help because that's what you're supposed to do, right? The role of a government during something like uh, inclement weather, disasters, uh, public health crises like the coronavirus uh, pandemic that we're in. All of this stuff, the government's job and the government's role is to effectively take care of its people, to make sure that they are financially taken care of, they are taken care of in terms of health, in terms of safety, and put measures in place to encourage people to uh, you know listen to those rules and listen to those guidelines. Now, uh, this this is probably leading into a, 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 t- a tangent that I don't think I want to completely delve into, but it's worth mentioning. Is when you have mistrust of a government because a government has proved itself to be so corrupt and so bought out and so corporatized, uh, it's difficult that even when the government does come out and give you legitimate safety, uh, you know, uh, protocols like wearing a mask uh, and, and so on and so forth. Because they've already proven themselves to be so corrupt, um, you know, it leads to people saying, well, what's the what's the situation with this? Oh, why are we locking down? Oh, why is there no financial, uh, you know, solutions to this problem? Why are we not being given a UBI and so on and so forth? But that's a separate tangent. And, and I, I don't want to deviate too further away from what's going on in Texas. Right. Texas has a privatized electric grid. Uh, and uh, that's that's part of the problem. Why is that part of the problem is because, uh, first of all, you shouldn't be privatizing any of this stuff, right? I think it's very silly to privatize public utilities like heat and electricity and water and even the Internet, I think, should be a public uh, utility. It should not be privatized and run by corporations, right? Uh, health, I don't think, is something that should be privatized. Look at what's going on with health care. All of these things... Uh, the bottom line of all these things is not the functional run of the utility or or public service that these private companies are trying to be in charge of, right? When it comes to the healthcare industry, the bottom line is not healthcare. It's not to make you better from whatever ails you. Yeah, it's uh, we need to make money and the product we're selling is a healthy life. And if you can't afford that healthy life, then fuck off. You know, your choice is to go die. Like, that's that's basically what they're saying. With this situation, it's the same thing, right? Their their product is 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 a is a utility that provides heat, that provides electricity, that provides the comfort of shelter, uh, which is which are all basic human rights. Uh, for all intents and purposes, what's going on in Texas is a massive human rights violation. That's what that's what it is. And and it's very difficult to argue that it's not. When there's hundreds and thousands of people in the state of Texas that are freezing, a, f- a bunch of folks have, have died because of this. And the reason why is because what's the focus of any industry that gets privatized is profits, is the bottom line, is how much money you're making. Are we making enough money? And that shouldn't be the, that shouldn't be the bottom line. 
the bottom line of, of a company like ERCOT, which is which is the uh, private uh, company that uh, owns uh, the electric grid in Texas, the bottom line should be how can we provide electricity and heat to all of these people in Texas? And if we get a snowstorm where uh, you know the heat and the electricity are are are, are going to spike, how do we make sure that if the generator blows out? We have backups that kickstart immediately. What are fail safes we can put in? Because our 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 goal isn't just to earn billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. It's to make sure that people are comfortable. It's to make sure that people don't freeze. It's to make sure that the shelter that they have, the housing that they have, the homes that they have are comfortable for them, that they can afford heating their apartment. But that is not what's happening in, in a lot of places. You know, um, what, what do they say? This was something that uh, I learned in college is they said, uh, well, well, air conditioning is is a luxury, but heat is a necessity. Uh, so even if you can't pay your heating bill, uh, they can't turn off your heat. Because it's a violation of human rights. And these people are taught this, though. The pri the people that champion private industry, the people that that uh, go rah 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 privatism. We have to privatize everything. Oh, the private businesses. You know, the, do you really want the government to 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 run these things? And, and you know, the people that say, oh, the go you you don't want the government to run healthcare. You don't want the government to run uh, uh, public utilities. You don't want the government to look how terrible of a job they do. Yeah, but then they have to answer to us directly. That's what's going on right now. I mean, ERCOT is answering to the people directly, all the people that don't have power, all the people that are freezing, all the people that have to burn trash cans outside their homes or look for somebody with a fireplace or figure out how to get the fuck out of Texas, drive five, six hours to a different state and hope that they can find a place to stay in the middle of a pandemic. Like, that's who they have to answer to now. So elected officials right now don't have to answer directly to us. They they're they're basically performance artists for corporations. And that's essentially what this this is proving. And, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But this is the thing is like they don't have any plans for these disasters because planning for these disasters and putting in fail safes costs a lot of money. Not a shit ton of money, but more money than I think they're willing to spend. And that's what happened. There's no fail safes in place. Because this private industry was like, man, don't worry about it. Hey, we we got we got a couple mil. We turned a profit this quarter. We don't want to take that profit and put us in the black or or or, or God forbid the red. We don't want to go below that. I mean, how would we pay our people? Oh, maybe the CEO of the corporation that's probably making you know, 10, 15, 20 times more than the average employee of that company could maybe give up their salary for a bit to help take care of their employees, to make sure that their customers are actually getting the product that they're fucking paying for. But they don't care about that because it gets in the way of their infinite profits. It gets in the way of them being rich. And that's really what they care about. And now, now that's coming to the light, that's coming to the forefront because hundreds of millions of people in Texas don't have, don't have power, don't have heat. And they're trying to, play the blame game and they were taught in business school of how to turn a profit not how to take care of people with your pro but with your product but how to make a bunch of fucking money compassion isn't taught in schools compassion isn't a part of business logic isn't a part of business unlimited profits is how do you turn more money out for your business is? And that's a, and that's exactly what's going on. This is why you shouldn't privatize these things. This is why it's an insane idea to say that private companies should be in charge of public utilities or the internet or healthcare or education because they don't care about those things. The, the, um, the ultimate goal is fucking making money. Everything else is secondary. Everything else can get pushed aside. 
And that's exactly what we're seeing in Texas. That's exactly what we saw in Flint, Michigan. That's exactly what we're seeing in cities like Pittsburgh, in in small communities in Louisiana, Mississippi, Erie, Pennsylvania, these small towns that get fucked over by corporations. They don't care because at least they turned a profit. And when and when it became, you know, um, too uh, controversial for them to make a profit off of the public disaster that they're creating. They bail out and they leave the they leave the city or they move to a different country or they move to a different state. And and the city is left to to deal with the reckoning. I mean, the state of Texas is going to be alone to deal with the state of the, the the reckoning of what's happening right now. You really think that the governor is going to take responsibility? You think you think ERCOT is going to pay for all of the lives that have been ruined and destroyed in the last few days alone? You think that this 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 itself should be a, a little bit of a, a light bulb going off to say, you know what? Maybe it's time for renewable, sustainable sources of energy. Maybe we start pushing away from from this inefficient grid system that we have that runs on fossil fuels that's creating an environmental disaster and maybe we should go find a different source of energy absolutely not they don't give a shit here i i want to play this clip for you guys it's a short clip of uh of the governor of texas uh governor abbott here and this is him talking to good old Sean Hannity, good old crying on national television, Sean Hannity. Make sure this is going to switch over here. Aha, there it goes. Excellent. So this is something, this is from um, Real News Network. And this is, uh, this is, this is from the Twitter this is a Twitter thing here. Let's let's listen to what he says. Uh, oil, old fashioned oil and coal. Uh, I'm not against nuclear energy either. I'm not against wind turbines. But my question is, if they have these rolling blackouts and you got freezing weather, I mean, uh, and they're not reliable and it's use it or lose it. What good is it? Sean, this shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. Texas is blessed with multiple sources of energy, such as uh, natural gas and oil uh, and nuclear, as, as well as uh, solar and wind. Uh, but you saw from what Trace said, uh, and that is our wind and our solar got shut down, and, and they were uh, collectively more than 10 percent of our power grid. And that thrust Texas into a situation where it was lacking power in a statewide basis. Uh, that was power that was spread out by that ERCOT organization, or organization that you were talking about. As a result, uh, it just shows uh, that fossil fuel is necessary uh, for the state of Texas as well as other states to make sure that we were, uh, will be able to heat our homes in the wintertime and cool our homes in the summertime. Ten percent is what uh, this guy claims is solar and wind, a little over 10 percent. And they claim that that overloaded ERCOT's grid to the point where it just just like completely blacked out the whole state. If t first of all, do you understand if ten percent of solar and wind energy can overload your wonderful fossil fuel run grid, then that means that we need to figure out how to harness that power because you just proved that 10% can probably run this entire fucking country if it blew out your fucking fossil fuel grid, right? Like, you just kind of proved how strong solar and wind is. That's all you did. You just proved that 10%, the 10% the of the energy that's produced and used by the grid, that's produced by solar and wind, that's used by your grid is enough to blow it out because that's how much energy like do you understand like this is such this is such bullshit propaganda to sit there and be like well we got it we got to get the fossil the green new deal would have been a disaster first of all you don't understand that solar isn't use it or lose it that there are solar batteries involved that you store the energy second of all solar energy has been proven to be wildly more effective than fossil fuel energy from from the piece of coal or or natural gas or oil that you burn 
to what comes out of you know this light bulb here or what's charging my computer is at most i believe 23 percent um my my exact numbers might be off here people but uh something around 23 percent right um and this was this was something that was reported in 2017 is is what they were saying the efficiency of it was uh, uh was about 23 percent efficiency they did the same thing with solar and they found out that at minimum at minimum it's 48 percent it's almost double the efficiency of natural gas solar right if we use that with batteries first of all think of the amount of land that we would save we wouldn't need these giant fucking power facilities. It would be a lot smaller. If we had if we had solar batteries, the batteries would then be used to run uh, run the power for all these communities, right? They wouldn't be out of power because because we've stored power. That is the point of using solar energy. Oh, it's use it or lose it. It's not use it or lose it. That's a false thing to fucking say, Sean Hannity. You clearly don't understand how solar energy is supposed to work. That's something that everybody fucking said. Uh, Loose Black has a great joke w that I love, where he where he said uh, where he said we don't we don't really trust solar energy because the sun goes down at night and and it doesn't tell us where it goes, right? And I thought that uh, to, to me that's a fucking brilliant joke. Because you're supposed to store the energy. Batteries were always something that scientists were were talking about. Tesla's was building batteries, and I know Tesla's not really a, a great person anymore. But having the batteries would have saved, probably saved a, a bunch of people in Texas. It's not a use it or lose it energy source. It's a twofold energy source. You have the solar panels. And then you have the batteries that store the energy. That's kind of how it's supposed to work. And then he starts bringing in the new Green New Deal, which is not even something that we were talking about in this situation. And it's not something that has been even considered by Congress. I think a few senators like AOC and stuff have talked about it over the years. But, you know, even Joe Biden was like, bah, fuck the Green New Deal. I'm not going to do that shit. So this guy's just straight up lying about it uh and then and then he's claims also let me find this the the statement too is because he said we should burn our belongings that's what that's what he said uh people are below freezing temperatures and and oh here it is uh implemented as texans is resorted to burning their belongings to keep their children warm uh, as viewed as another example of failed leadership yeah people are burning their belongings they're like yeah that's fine that's okay. That's you guys pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. That's what's up. That's what you do. That's American capitalism right there, baby. Yeah, you got to burn those belongings. And then you go out and you buy more because that's how consumerism and capitalism works. You got to sacrifice your shit to capitalism as you would the gods of old. And then you, and then you go buy more shit. That's what you want to do. So ERCOT is the, the the major thing that's that's being blamed for all this, right? That's uh, that's what's being blamed for all this. They're the private firm that controls the Texas electrical grid, uh, which also electricity runs on fossil fuels. It runs on burning natural gas or coal or any uh, one of those kinds of things. So even the notion of, of having electric cars wouldn't 100% be, uh, uh, what's, what's the term I'm looking for here? It, it wouldn't, it wouldn't result in, in decreasing climate change that much. It wouldn't re result in decreasing the carbon footprint all that much either. It would reduce it a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, they could have made preparations for something like this. They knew that these rolling blackouts were going to happen. They knew that the grid was going to get overloaded because these big storms were coming in. And look, Texas doesn't, Texas, I knocked my glass over on my desk almost, uh, but Texas doesn't deal with snow very often. I was in Texas last year around this time. At the end of February, I was, I was touring through Texas with Lee, with Lee Camp, 
Uh, and, you know, I think the coldest it got was about 50 degrees. Uh, that might have been the coldest that it got at night, you know, when the when the sun was down. It was it was maybe around 50 degrees or so. Uh, but, you know, I toured the south in the middle of the winter because. Uh, because I was like, I don't want to be in the cold and still like a lot of places, I didn't escape the cold. Like I started my tour in Huntsville and that was still cold. But Huntsville is prepared for it. Right. Like they know that it's going to get cold in Huntsville. And, and the same thing, like Texas doesn't get super cold, but they do get kind of cold. But they knew that this weather was coming. They knew that this crazy ass storm was coming. I mean, climate change has been this perpetual fucking problem for years now. Like every year we have been dealing with these bananas, crazy snowstorms, you know, and then we lead into quote unquote spring. And then it's the record ho hottest fucking summer we've ever seen. The brush all dries up. There's not enough uh, moisture in the air. And then we see forest fires. And then those forest fires blaze so hot that they cross the country uh, and, and the smog blocks the sun and the, and the East Coast is affected by it. And then there's hurricanes that the South has to deal with. Record number of her every year. Oh, my God. The, it's a record number of hurricanes, meteorologists say. At this point, you would think we would go, oh, I think I think we're responsible for these crazy natural disasters that are getting worse and worse every fucking year. Maybe we should do something to prepare ourselves for it, considering that we have two parties uh, that are unwilling to let go of fossil fuels and and look for sustainable sources of energy. Essentially, what these people are doing is holding people's lives hostage for the sake of profit. They let these people, you know, live, get, get to this point where they're, now they're living in horrible conditions. And they're like, oh, but we're making money. Let's blame wind and solar energy, which use 10%, which use 10% of that electrical grid. 10% of that electrical grid shut down the whole fucking state of Texas. Both both of these, both Abbott and ERCOT should be done. They should be ousted and they should completely restart over. Because this is ridiculous for them to sit there and blame some some shit that has nothing to do with what exactly happened. They made zero plans to help these people and they're continuing to make zero plans. What they're doing is making excuses and starting to blame a bunch of bullshit that has not make a plan. How are you going to help people in Texas? Your fucking senator went to Mexico for vacation, which arguably he could have been down there looking for all those jobs. Mexico has clearly been stealing. He could have been doing that. We don't know. He could have been on an investigative mission, but also a vacation for capitalism. That could have been what Ted Cruz was doing. We don't know. He could have been a sleeper agent to be like, I'm going to find these fucking jobs and bring them back to Texas and Texas will be saved. Because then more jobs will be there. So more people will be doing stuff and generating body heat. And we can use that body heat as a source of energy and power. Maybe that's what Ted, who knows? Who fucking knows? But these people should be fucking done. ERCOT should be out. We should no longer be privatizing utilities. And fucking Abbott should be donezo. Get him the fuck out of there and put somebody competent. That's all I want with le government leaders. A little bit of competency. That's I'll Let's go with that. All right. I will uh, look at some comments here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Holly. Uh, Kali says cities did not sign ERCOT, uh, not sign ERCOT are doing better. Uh, yeah, they're not doing better. They shouldn't, they shouldn't even be in charge of it. Sweden offered advice about wind turbines and how to keep them from freezing. There we go. Listen to Sweden. So what, so who, who do we, who do we got? Field crews, <laughs> fled, fled crews. <laughs> Fled Cruz said he uh, uh, he should have been on the ground. No shit. Fle I like Fled Cruz. That is a that is an excellent nickname for him. Um, yeah, he should have he should have fucking been there. Like that's this is the role of a government is to help people 
when disasters like this happen. Like this is what you, the governments are put together for. You build safe, uh, fail safe plans for when disasters like this happen. And by the way, this is not something unprecedented. Climate change has been perpetually getting worse and worse every single year. So it at this point, if you're not going to fucking move away from fossil fuels to try to find some other sources of sustainable energy, which there are plenty of sources, of, even if they're transitionary uh, sources of sustainable energy, they're still better than fucking burning fossil fuels and wrecking the climate the way that we are. William Robinson, thanks for tuning in. Uh, government wastes, wastes everything. The issue is monopoly. Uh, the issue is monopoly. Government is suppressed to break up. Yeah, well, they're supposed to break it up, but they don't. Amazon and Jeff Bezos is a is a prime example of that. Yeah, you know, he basically owns every single industry, and has contracts with uh with the CIA and the Pentagon. Like this dude has a monopoly over fucking everything. And I mean, you know, this is not this is not a Democrat Republican issue. It's it's a it's a money issue. It's a government run by capitalism issue. Texas is a humanitarian crisis. Absolutely. Uh, Abbott tried lamely to blame the disaster on alternative energy sources. What a stooge. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of comical to watch because I think I, he did one of those things like if if you listen to the clip, he did one of those things where he uh, um, tried to sound smart by using like those kind of smarty pants. Like the tone of his voice was very smarty pants, but it was very clearly like he just didn't give a shit, just didn't give a shit. William Robinson says uh, the wind wheels froze and stopped producing power and solar uh, formed got covered with snow and they weren't producing power. A grid runs pretty much at capacity. Uh, 10% lows crashes the grids. Uh, I don't know if I fully understand about that. Uh, what, what you're, what you're trying to say. Solar doesn't work under the snow. Yes. But again, if, if solar is used with a battery source, then this is a moot point because you're storing that energy too. You're using what you need and you're storing energy. And there's been plenty of studies to show that, uh, that solar is uh, more efficient than the fossil fuel grid that we're using right now. Uh, so, you know, I, I would, I would, I would question what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but again, that's, that's only if you're looking at solar, when it's not being used with a battery source, which which is right in this case. In this case, there is no battery source that they're using. The solar energy that this, that's produced is plugged directly into this grid, and this grid is not an efficient grid, so it doesn't really matter. So even if solar energy was uh, used to 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 make energy that's twice as efficient or more than the fossil fuel grid, it doesn't matter. The solar is linked to the fossil fuel grid, so its efficiency is going to be what the fossil fuel grid determines that efficiency to be. So it's bringing solar down instead of actually using what solar is capable of, of using. Uh, Holly says, uh, Biden, I'm not going to support the new deal. I'm not going to ban fracking. Yeah, that was a big deal, especially in Pennsylvania. Uh, the whole ban fracking thing. That was a, that was a, a weird campaign run by some GOP super PACs uh, that he was going to ban fracking. And then he blatantly fucking came out and said that he wasn't going to. Uh, and and quite honestly, I think that's kind of probably what won him a bunch of like central Pennsylvania, because a bunch of central Pennsylvania is uh, are more conservative than than the cities are than Harrisburg, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Pittsburgh. You know, there's probably a couple of their blue pockets around the around the, the state, you know, like the Williamsport area, the, the state college area. Uh, but really, a lot of it is conservative and really a lot of it is is pro fracking. Uh, and I think him blatantly coming out and saying, well, I'm not going to ban fracking. And then the ads kind of going against what he exactly said might have won him the state. I don't agree with not banning fracking. I think it's it's a fucking disaster. Youngstown is having earthquakes because of fracking. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> you call Green New Suicide every freeze. They uh, they stop working perpetual dark winter again it i don't i don't agree 100 percent with the green new deal uh i think the green party green new deal 
which has been out for a long time, is is better than what was pitched uh, by the Democratic Party. But, you know, and, and you bring up some issues with uh, uh, with the solar energy, too, which which a couple people have brought up. Stop mining the forest for lithium is a bad idea. Yeah. Mining lithium would be a bad idea. Again, there are there's no reason why we can't look for better sources to help solar energy be better than what it is. But none of that is going to work if you don't give people the opportunity to look into that kind of stuff, which when you when you just focus on uh, when you only focus on fossil fuels, you kind of just bail on that kind of shit. I was wondering how well solar panels work in snow and ice. Either way, uh, there, there's preventative options. Yeah, again, the, the options would have been if you use solar energy and you use use it to store energy in the batteries, there would have still been some energy reserves in the batteries that you could have provided to uh, to the people that lost power, right? Like that's the notion of having a battery. That's the notion of having backup energy storage. Uh, and, and they didn't fucking do that kind of shit. Oh, I think I lost, I lost a comment there. Uh, Jay, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in here in Arkansas. A majority of the state power is supplied by Entergy. Uh, which has monopoly like Texas. They knew these storms were coming, but nothing was done to reinforce or upgrade our infrastructure. Yeah, Duquesne Light, I think, is our energy source in in Pittsburgh, and they are also not awesome. <laughs> uh, growing fuel instead of food is a bad idea. Uh, I don't see why you can't have both. Why you can't have a sustainable source of fuel and good food. I think we're, we're living in a society where both of those things are absolutely possible and choosing one or the other, uh, seems like it, it seems like it's, it's not really advancing the idea, May, you know, kind of making that Sophie's choice. Uh, so you're saying 10% of the grid stopped making power solar and wind. It froze and froze and crashed the grid. I don't think that's what crashed the grid. Blaming it on solar and wind. And 10% of that power being used, I don't think is an accurate description. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a little confused, William. Are you agreeing with what uh, Governor Abbott is saying about, uh, about the solar and wind crashing the grid? Uh, I'm, I'm a little confused about w w what you're saying here. Uh, Jay says, Entergy Monopoly has also shut out solar energy options here as well. Uh, what happened in Texas could have very well happened here. I think it would have happened in multiple of those states, and I and, and which would have been and a a major disaster, um, you know. And and it could it could happen here too. We had a blackout the other day, but I think the but I think it, up up north up north uh, in in states that are kind of used to it, like Illinois and Chicago, like those states are used to having this kind of weather. So I think. They have to plan for it because if they don't, then every year people are going to be stuck without power, stuck without heat. And every year this would have been a major problem and people would fucking revolt against these energy companies. Now companies like Entergy and ERCOT and all of these fucking corporations that are controlling uh, the, the, you know, the energy grid are now going to have to take these precautions in place, especially looking at how bad the response is to Texas. Nobody, nobody in, in this entire country should be like, yeah, you know what happened to Texas? Well, that's because of the green new deal. Even just saying the green new deal is probably what fucking collapsed that, that grid. No, it's a shit grid. In fact, the grid system in and of itself has been, has been said that it's not a good, way to provide energy for people like it's just not an efficient system uh so uh even the most frigid weather solar panels uh turn sunlight into electricity solar panels create energy from our sun's abundant light not the sun's heat uh thus even in the winter months yeah that that is part of the part of the reason why solar is pushed the way that it is uh so again there are if if you allow the research to happen, if you don't block solar from from flourishing, there is a good possibility that you can find something uh, you can find uh, materials better than lithium to use. Right. If you if you allow like they, don't they talk about how capitalism allows innovation to happen? Well, here you go. Solar can be innovative. Solar can get better. But the fossil fuel industries in a lot of these states won't allow them to flourish. Uh, 
William, you're out. Well, that's a shame. Uh, uh, you know, I would I would like to know what you were trying to say. I was unclear about what you're what what you were trying to convey. Uh, and I understand sometimes in the comment section it's difficult to 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 convey. But I I hope you come back and and hopefully can put out your point of view. Uh, and I would love to hear it, even if I disagree with it. Uh, I was worried that the snow would block the light, but there's got to be a weight from keeping it from doing that. Possibly. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know I keep rehashing the battery aspect of it, but the battery aspect of it is pretty, uh, uh, pretty important. You should look up the story about the former Texas mayor, Tim Boyd, if you really want to be angry today. Jay, I have that. I have that image saved up, actually. Um, and I was going to write a thing about it this weekend because I, I read that statement yesterday morning and I was I was pretty peeved off. Um, and so I do I do have that queued up uh, to, to talk about. Uh, <laughs> you had a brain fart. No worries that that. Uh, yeah, our power gets knocked out all the time, usually not too long, but it's a frequent problem. Uh, we've had a couple, uh, not a not a significant amount, but usually, again, the backup generators kick on and. Uh, like we get crazy wind up here and the snow kind of uh, or, or rather the cold kind of gets trapped in here because we're in the mountains. I'm, I'm red economics. I know you're in, you're in West Virginia, so I'm sure you have similar problems. But again, you have to know that about the area that you're serving, even if you're a private company and make plans to come back uh, and and kind of tackle that issue, which I don't think that these people are. Uh, Holly it says bottom line infrastructure needs to be. Uh, supported. Absolutely. 100% agreed on that. Uh, I'm going to look over to Rockfin. For-profit healthcare is eugenics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fled crews. I like that that's, that that's becoming a thing. Uh, alternative energy transition is the partial answer to our current problem. We ultimately need to use less. Uh, yeah, I think, but, and, and that goes into, um, uh, uh, Sarah, I don't know if you've if you've heard of resource based economics, but resource based economics essentially talks about that uh, allocating the right amount of energy for for areas and 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 really looking into how much energy we use, what's the right amount of energy we need to use, how much do we need to save and produce, and things of that sort. Uh, for profit, anything without regulations, you might say is eugenics as well. Uh, I think I can uh, rephrase what William is saying, but not in the way that's favorable to the way he said it. Uh, yeah, that would be that'd be great. I don't think I disagree with what uh, I, I'm just having trouble understanding what he was saying. It did sound like he was agreeing with Governor Abbott. Maybe I was wrong on that. Uh, but you you go on to say if 10 percent reduction in solar power crashed the grid, that means they were uh, banking on that solar power instead of uh, a higher percentage build in, built in for redundancy. Oh, OK, that makes sense. But then that still goes back into you know, ERCOT should have taken that into account, right? If you're if you're a company that is an expert in energy production, is shouldn't you have taken that into account? Uh, still kind of blaming solar doesn't particularly make a whole lot of sense. Uh, fracking is more about pumping toxins, toxic waste underground than energy independence. The, the fact that the chemicals used were proprietary should be a huge red flag. Uh, agreed. Uh, and we should decentralize the grid. And these large-scale solar wind farms are uh, inefficient and prog problematic. That's that's where you, you know I, I had a conversation with a with with some folks on the road that that do talk about um, solar and wind, and they were and they were basically saying, "Hey, I don't use it to power my house. I actually sell the energy back to the company and get a refund, and that is more efficient." And that's more that's better for the consumer than powering your house with solar. And the problem with that is because the solar energy that they're producing and the solar energy that they they use in their house is actually being used on that grid. So it because you're because the solar and wind farms are connected to the grid, it makes them less efficient than they actually are. Rather than if they were you know uh, they were built on using some kind of a battery grid, maybe. I'm not sure exactly what the solution is. I do know that the pro and and that's partly because I, I haven't learned enough about uh, alternative alternative solutions to to getting off of the 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 inefficient grid that we're on. Um, but but you're right. Uh, you know, decentralizing the the grid is is something that needs to be done. and because they're connected to it, it makes solar and wind a lot more inefficient. 
and it is far more pro uh, problematic. Uh, Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot -H -H com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content you can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.